Judge Vonda B. Court is now in session. Judge, this is the case of the cook. Thank you. You're welcome. You all may be seated. Okay, Ms. Cook, you brought this case before the court. What's going on? Well, Your Honor, I've got a 13-year-old daughter and a husband, that ex-husband has decided to start his life over, but I can't do that because I've got a child to take care of and okay. I need some help doing that. What do you mean by start his life over? He remarried? What no, he's decided to go back to school. That's a good thing, right? Uh, that's fine, but it doesn't help us any. Okay, you, you mean financially? It financially, help you. right. Okay, what type of activities are your daughter, you know, involved she's, in? Uh, she wants to do cheerleading, uh, and she's on student council. Okay. And I'm assuming student council costs, they have a membership fee or something? They have membership fees, and they have a lot of activities <coughs> that they do that they're involved in because it's kind of a leadership thing, and so they have a lot of things that they have to go to as well. Okay. All right, and you're just looking for some financial assistance. I'm just asking for some help. Sounds pretty straightforward, sir. Um, is there a reason why you don't want to give her any money to pay for your daughter? Well, it's, it's not that I don't want to pay. It's just I, I'm not working at all. I'm okay. a full-time student. Okay. Uh, my tuition is paid for, and I've got a Pell Grant, and, they, and I get basically $3,200 for a school year to help cover my living expenses as well. So Do they I, break that up by semester? It's broken up by semester. <coughs> I have okay. to maintain uh, grades and stay in school. I have to prove that to be able to continue to get the receive the, the grant. So uh, just trying to further my education. I understand my daughter's important to me. I love her very much, but I'm, I'm going back to law. I'm trying to get into law school, so I'm trying to figure out how to better it in the long run. Okay. That sounds pretty fair, ma'am. Are you aware that he gets this Pell Grant money? Yes, ma'am, I am. But I know a lot of students also work at least a part-time job. Right. And, you know, the money he's getting with the Pell Grant, I know it's not a lot. But, at, again, I'm, I'm only a, a daycare worker, so I don't get a lot of money either. And I need some help just to, even just with her normal, everyday things. I'm paying for her insurance uh, as it is. and just trying to keep things going is difficult. Right, I understand, but you can't squeeze blood out of a rock, okay? You understand that, right? Yes. He's only, only gonna be obligated to pay whatever it is that he has as income. Although some students may work, not all full-time students have a job either. I mean, you, you have to take that into consideration. So based on the information that he provided and that the testimony that you both gave, him confirming the amount of money that he receives from going to school and you knowing that, that's all he's gonna be obligated to give you at the moment. Now, later at some time when he does, you know, presumably go to law school or anything like that, you can receive extra money after he starts working. But as for right now, I can't take more from him than what he has. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, so $3,200 per school year is, is not even, he's not even making a full year worth of that money. He's, you said a semester is broken down. So like $1,600 or so. That's about right. So I've, I'm, I'm living with somebody else that's going to school, so we're help split the expenses, trying to make it last as long as we possibly can. Right, right. So, ma'am, he is, I mean, based on what he's telling me, and I have to assume his testimony is true, until you provide me with anything different, I mean, that's all he has at the time, at this time. So that's all that I can calculate off of. So because of that, $3,200 is not a lot of money, so I would have to base his child support on minimum wage. You understand? Yes, and okay. any sort of help would help. Okay, it, it, it's something, it's something. Right. You know, it may not cover everything, but you also work, so until he's able to get a better, um, you know, not necessarily a better job because he's not working right now, but maybe, you know, as he, keeps going through school, he may get more money from a Pell Grant. We don't necessarily know, but until that happens, he'll be at this amount. So gross of minimum wage is $1,256, net of $1,134.87, which brings your monthly obligation to $226.97. That's based on minimum wage. 
okay? All right, Does, would that 226 help co cover something with student council, yes, something with cheerleading? Yes, I, I just needed some help. I wasn't expecting him to do everything. Okay, okay, all right. And sir, you understand that, correct? So when does that start? That starts today. Okay. The obligation starts today. Um, just know that in the future, when you get a job or you receive, start receiving more money for some reason from your Pell Grant, you have an obligation to report that. And if you don't, she can actually report it and bring you back to court. And at that time, you will be paying more than minimum wage and child support. Just wanna make sure you understand that. So if you become a big time lawyer one day and you know, for some reason your child is still under the age of 18, your child support could still go up. I got it. Okay, any questions from either of you? Yeah. Okay, if there's yeah. nothing further, you all are dismissed. Hi guys, we've come to the educational portion of our show. I just wanna go over what you all just watched in the case of the cook. So in this particular case, dad was a full-time student, mom worked at a daycare, mom needs some financial assistance. Dad hasn't been providing any because he's a full-time student. Is he still obligated to pay child support? Under Texas law, that is very much so the case. Although dad only made a certain amount of money based on his Pell Grant for school, the court can still base his child support off of that. Well, because the income that he has would be so low, it's just better to set his child support at that minimum wage amount. So in Texas, there's a certain amount for gross and net and a child support obligation that you receive when you have either no income at all or you have a very limited amount of income. So therefore, he was ordered to pay child support on minimum wage based on his very limited amount of resources. Do you know of anyone who's experienced a similar situation? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and make sure you comment below. You never know, their story may end up as a scenario on our show. After all, these kids aren't raised on air alone. Support Court with Judge Vonda B.